come on. You're in the house of the Lord. Good morning. Welcome to all of you who have joined us in the sanctuary today and those who are watching by live stream or Zoom or however you join us by social media. We welcome you to worship at Covenant Community Church, the United Church of Christ congregation that proudly proclaims no matter who you are or where you're on life's journey, you are always welcome here. Amen? Amen. Let's pause for prayer. Good morning, God. This is the day you have made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. And we begin it together in our worship by welcoming your holy presence. For the psalmist writes, be glad in the Lord and rejoice. Shout for joy. And we pray that our worship together will be a sweet, sweet sound in your ear. And we pray that the songs we sing, the prayers we pray, the scriptures we proclaim, the gifts we give, the spoken word we hear will glorify you, but also help us to come to our senses on your love and forgiveness that we might experience new life. For we pray it in Christ's name. Amen. amen. And amen. I want to remind you, uh, those of you who are watching at home, uh, if you would like to participate in communion, please get something to represent the bread and the drink and we and have it available when we get to that part of the service. We also invite you to join us for Life Lessons this Wednesday night. Uh, Pete and I will continue the series with preaching on First Peter. And uh, this week we will continue with Part B of Your Integrity and Your Influence. And we invite you to be, come and zoom in and be a part of that conversation. Also, don't forget the Lighthouse meets on Sunday morning at 1030 in person and on Zoom. And so uh, you are welcome to join us. And we are currently studying the book of Revelation, and they will continue that. Our monthly board meeting was moved from last Tuesday evening to this coming Tuesday evening. Uh, and uh, members can join us uh, via Zoom. Uh, the link is on the website so we encourage you to do that at 6 30 you can join us at 6 30. Uh, if you're watching by social media please give us a shout out and uh, identify yourself as appropriate in the comment and chat sections I, while i was on vacation last week uh, uh, i had dinner with some folks who uh, zoom in i mean they watch online and and I, but they didn't make comments if i said put the comments in there be obedient so we'll know who you are amen that, folks watching down in Florida, I want to remind you about Jonathan uh, Quinn's uh, uh, the good news. He is home, and he, but it's a long uphill battle. And so uh, uh, remind you of the GoFundMe page on Facebook. And also you can give through the church. Please identify it. If, if you give through the church, um, every penny of it, there's no service fee for that and so forth. Uh, birthdays this, this, uh, this week. Tomorrow is John John's birthday. Uh, he, told, he informed me he's almost as old as I am. He's 28 and I'm 29. Uh, and then on the 30th is uh, Kay Hendrick Rose's birthday. And anybody want to take a guess whose birthday is on April Fool's Day? William Barrett. William Barrett. <laughs> birthday is Friday on April Fool's Day. He was Mama Dorothy's April Fool joke. Wasn't it? But anyway. We thank God for that. Let's wish him happy birthday. <laughs> this is the last Sunday of uh, Black History, um, not Black History, Women's History Month. Our opening hymn was written by a great hymn writer, Eliza A. Hoffman. The song is a very familiar Latin song, Down at the Cross. We're going to do something unusual. We're going to sing the whole song just for uh, James's pleasure today. <laughs> Well, all the verse, I couldn't choose between the verses. Let's stand and sing. The words are written, you both are on the screen. Down at the cross where my Savior died, down there in winds and from sin I cried. There Oh, 
join me for the covenant affirmation. We are the people of God who live as the people of hope. Therefore, let us declare it so this morning in our covenant affirmation. I am a child of God. I celebrate God's Holy Spirit coming into my life. Come, Holy Spirit, come. I accept God's spirit and power to inspire me, guide me, and motivate me to be a witness of the gospel, offering hope, showing thankfulness, and sharing joy. Thanks be to God. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. I love, I love, I love that to this morning we have another baptism. Amen? Amen. I just love it. Uh, would Austin Gilmore please come and face the congregation? Come on, this side, sweetie. Get yourself a okay. Praise God. As we love to say, baptism is that special moment in a person's life when they by rec they recognize by an outward sign an inward reality that's taking place in their heart. And so today, Austin Gilmore comes uh, to us for baptism. Let us pray. God, we give you thanks for your creation of water and for the sustaining of life and health that it brings. We now therefore pray that you sanctify this water for baptism so that by the power of your Holy Spirit, Austin Gilmore may be baptized into eternal life and live the rest of his life through the risen life of our Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen and amen. Austin, do you freely come to this point in your life of accepting water baptism? as a sign of obedience to Christ's command and thereby accepting Jesus Christ as your Savior and Sovereign, would respond, I do. Do you accept God's forgiveness for the sins you have committed in the past and turn to God whose eternal love embodies you today as it was embodied in the risen Jesus Christ, our Lord? Would you respond, I do. And also, do you claim for yourself on this day all that is reserved for you as a child of God? Would you respond, I do. Austin, in obedience to Christ's command, I baptize you, my brother, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, in Jesus' name. Amen. Let us pray. Lord Jesus Christ, you have affirmed Austin, new birth, by water in your spirit. We offer you our praise and thanksgiving, and we promise that with the help of your grace, we will uplift him, Stand by him and encourage him in accordance with the baptismal promises he has made to you this day. Keep him forever 
in your grace and your care. And grant that all the days of his life from this day forward may abide in your divine favor and your divine wisdom. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Austin, by the authority invested in me by Almighty God, I proclaim God's wonderful grace on your life as you are affirmed into God's family as a baptized child of God's grace and hope. Let's give God the glory. Amen. God bless you. God bless you. Amen. God, I feel like old Pentecostal Baptist churches we all this baptism. Ain't a thing wrong with it either, is it? Amen. Amen. We move from that into the prayers of our people. And uh, for those of you at home, if you have a prayer request or praise report, please put it in the chat or comment section. Uh, if you would like it added to the church uh, uh, prayer list, please uh, send an email to the church and we will do so. As we go to prayer, we always begin with our praises and our thanksgiving. I give praise for the birth of my new great-great-nephew this week. I give praise for Austin's baptism today and, and, and uh, Iris' baptism a couple weeks ago. And also, the two of them uh, waiting for the membership class will be shortly. So we'll be retaking them into membership soon as well. Uh, anyone else has a praise report they would like to share with us? Okay. Uh, the praise list is getting too long to read, folks. There's a lot of them over here. We read them on Wednesday night, and we lift them individually on Wednesday night. But there's a, there, we have a long list. And if you have an unspoken prayer request, would you so signify by the raising of your hand? Let's go to God in prayer. Loving God, you said to Joshua, today I have rolled away from you the disgrace of Egypt. And so that place is called Gilgal to this day. And we praise you for these answers to prayer and praise reports that are an example of you rolling away the Egypts in so many lives. The Egypt of adversity, sickness and challenge. And we praise you for bringing these who have been the recipient of these praises to the Gilgal in their lives. And so we give you honor and glory. But we also reminded God that Psalms 32, says, David says, Therefore let all who are faithful offer prayer to you at times of distress. And that's what we're doing right now. We bring before the throne of grace and into your presence our prayer requests for those who are at critical moments of distress in their lives. For all those that you already know on the list, for all those unspoken requests, we bring those to you. For we also remember the day David says in that seventh verse, you are a hiding place for us. You preserve us from trouble and you surround us with glad cries of deliverance. And we pray for your deliverance this morning. In that confidence from your word, we ask you to provide each one that has been identified on the list, unspoken of, that you already know of, according to your wisdom and your grace. Whether it be restoration of physical healing, whether it be peace of mind through emotional and mental well-being. Perhaps this fullness of life because of financial viability and even renewed fellowship with you that brings spiritual wholeness. For all of these, in this moment, we simply ask, Lord, listen to your children praying. Lord, send your spirit in this place. Lord, listen to your children pray and send us love, send us power, and send us grace. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And amen.
Good morning. I'm Paul Thompson. I am the safety advice moderator of the board. You know, I've been saying something why I love this church. There are a lot of churches that are gigantic and they have jet planes, airplanes. <laughs> we don't. They have buses that they take you places. We don't. Vans that'll come get you. One day we will, but no, we don't even have a bicycle. I mean, <laughs> if we did, I'd probably fall off of it trying to ride it. But we do have a lot of love here. When you come through that door, you are welcome in this church. And, and we do not judge you. We, you need prayer, we'll give you prayer. We do everything we can because this is a wonderful church and you get a wonderful sermon and great music and it's just a great place to come and it makes me want to be a decent person and wants me to do things charitable things and do what's right but i have to tell you this without your tithes and offerings we wouldn't have our doors open and that's what we need because we're a good church and we do not need to disappear so that's all I'm saying, if, if you can give your support to us. If, if you do, also thank you. And if you don't, please prayerfully consider doing so. On the screen, our Facebook page, our website, our service, secure weight, you can give. Choose one of these most convenient for you. Please give generously. If you are in person, you can place your money in the offering plate. That's been going on for 100, 300 years. Just drop that money in there and we take it. <laughs> Most of the time I got my wig on when I want to do this, but I don't have my wig on. So, but I'm, I just, I just love this church and, and I'm glad that everyone's here and, and that we're going to be able to come back in person because God's getting this cloud away from everyone so okay <laughs> so please let us pray generous god thank you for the, the place like covenant that helps people experience new life and hope thank you for all the opportunities for each of us to help that happen through the giving of our tithes and offerings. Help us to be wise in using these gifts to bring hope to the lives of other people and bless each giver as well as those unable to give right now. In Christ's name we pray, amen. amen.
are you to Please rise in spirit and stand as you are able for the reading of the gospel from Luke chapter 15, verses 1 through 3 and 11 through 32. All the tax collectors and sinners were gathering around Jesus to listen to him. The Pharisees and legal experts were grumbling, saying, This man welcomes sinners and eats with them. Jesus told this parable. Jesus said, A certain man had two sons. The younger son said to his father, Father, give me my share of your inheritance. Then the father divided this estate between them. Soon after, the younger son gathered everything together and took a trip to a land far away. There, he wasted his wealth through extravagant living. When he had used up all of his resources, a severe food shortage arose in that country, and he began to be in need. He hired himself out to one of the citizens of that country who sent him into the fields to feed pigs. He longed to eat his fill from what the pigs ate, but no one gave him anything. When he came to his senses, he said, How many of my father's hired hands have more than enough food, but I'm starving to death. I will get up and go to my father and say to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and against you. I no longer deserve to be called your son. Take me on as one of your hired hands. So he got up and went to his father. While he was still a long way off, his father saw him and was moved with compassion. His father ran to him and hugged him and kissed him. Then his father said, then he, his son said, Father, I have sinned against heaven and against you. I no longer deserve to be called your son. But the father said to his servants, quickly, bring out the best robe and put it on him. Put a ring on his finger and sandals on his feet. Fetch the fatted calf and slaughter it. We must celebrate with feasting because this son of mine was dead and has come back to life. He was lost and is found, and they began to celebrate. Now, his older son was in the field. Coming in from the field, he approached the house and heard music and dancing. He called to one of the servants and asked what was going on. The servant replied, Your brother has arrived, and your father has slaughtered the fatted calf because he received his son back safe and sound. The older son was furious and didn't want to enter in, but his father came out and begged him. He answered his father, Look, I've served you all these years, and I never disobeyed your instruction, yet you've never given me even as much as a young goat so I could celebrate with my friends. But when this son of yours returned after gobbling up your estate on prostitutes, you slaughtered the fatty calf for him. Then his father said, Son, you are always with me, and everything I have is yours. But we had to celebrate and be glad. Because this brother of yours was dead and is alive. He was lost and he is found. This is the word of God. Praise Thanks be to God. God. Hallelujah. Amen. from Luke, very familiar passage. And also, uh, thank you, uh, Jamie, for preaching uh, last week. He did a great job, amen? amen. Uh, I got to watch the service after I got back home, and, and it was a fabulous sermon. I hope you've taken to heart and put into practice for your spiritual well-being those full meditation. Uh, points that he used last week on compassion, healing presence, innate harmony, and of course God's unconditional love. Again, thank you, thank you, Jamie, and thank you, Phil, for that great piece. Jesus, one of my favorites, Jesus paid it all. All to him I owe. Sin it left a crimson stain, but he washed it. 
white as snow. And when we say Jesus paid it all, that don't mean you can't, you still don't put your tip for Jesus in the... <laughs> I, I said that because of what a person in the sanctuary's first time here said, where do we put the tip for Jesus? <laughs> and I said to her, I wish people did tip Jesus. That's at least 10%. <laughs> Amen. Today is the last Sunday of Women's History Month, but it is also the fourth Sunday in Lent. Liturgically, today is also Latere Sunday. And Latere Sunday, Latere in, in uh, Latin means rejoice. And of course, this is one of the two Sundays a year where the liturgical color is pink. I know this is a little loud pink, but you know, you, you understand. It's pink. Amen? Or should I be technically correct and say it's rose? It's supposed to be rose Sunday. Now you might ask, why do they have a rose? Joyce Sunday in Lent. I'm glad you asked the question. Lent was instituted at a time when it called for fasting and meditation, and it was a, a season of solemnity. Well, Rejoice Sunday came about because the church came to recognize that by the fourth Sunday in Lent, people need a break. And so, the break is that on, is my phone doing weird things? It is. Uh, thank you. <laughs> and Jesus was calling, telling me that, by, I'm just kidding. Uh, and so that's why we have Rejoice Sunday. That lengthy gospel text is a familiar parable, but it's a story of hope that helps us to take a break if we follow is to take a break from the bad consequences the consequences of bad choices that we've made so that we can experience new life by coming to our senses that's what I want to talk about this morning experiencing new life by coming to our senses let's pray God, we're so grateful that you paid it all. And we're so grateful that you call us to experience new life. No matter what we've been through, no matter what we've done, to experience new life by coming to our senses on your love and forgiveness of us. And so speak to us in these moments through the words that I say that these your people may hear, understand, and receive with gladness this word so that they will take a break and rejoice in their lives. But we pray it in Christ's name and all God's children said, Amen and Amen. It is so good to be back with you this morning, and I feel like I'm experiencing new life after vacation. Amen? I didn't realize how bad I needed it. You ought to try it sometime. Not on Sunday. I'm just kidding. But this week in providing the sermon title for the bulletin early in the week and then preparing the sermon later in the week sort of conflicted with each other. I wish I had flipped the name of the sermon around and said, come to your senses and experience new life. And so as I was doing the sermon, the challenge for me uh, was deciding on what text to use. And that's because all four of the assigned lectionary texts for today was a, each one was a delicious, delicious uh, delight on a buffet of sermon preparation. And so I decided, while we'll only read the one that, from the gospel, I was going to use them all as one point for one point only. And that point is come to your senses on God's love and forgiveness and experience new life. I'll say it again. Come to your senses on God's love and forgiveness. Let me add something. 
for you and experience new life. Well, let's just dive into it. The first uh, assigned text was from the Old Testament book of Joshua. It was chapter 5 and the, it was verses 9 through 11, I think it was. And the opening verse, verse 9 says, The Lord said to Joshua, Today I have rolled away from you the disgrace of Egypt. And I couldn't help but think, I need to ask you, what is your Egypt of disgrace that you're battling in your life today? If you have one, then I want you to know God has a word for you today. Whatever it is, whatever is your Egypt of disgrace, it's covered by God's grace. And because of God's unconditional love for you, God wants to roll it away from you through God's forgiveness and God's acceptance. Come to your senses on God's love and forgiveness and experience new life. Amen? The second assigned text today was Psalms 32. If you know anything about Psalms 32, uh, uh, this great psalm was written uh, after, and it refers to the darkest part of King David's character. It comes out of his affair that he had with Bathsheba and her unexpected pregnancy. And then David, who, who's, uh, her wife was away in war, he calls him home to tell him to go home and visit, trying to get him to go home and have sex with his wife so she, they can put the baby off on Uriah. And that doesn't work. <laughs> Arise a man of integrity. He said, I'm not going when all of Egypt is in battlefield. And so, guess what David did? David arranged for his, him to be killed in battle. That's why? So he can marry Bathsheba. And so, Psalms 32 comes after David has been confronted by Nathan with all of this, and he confesses his sin, and after his sincerest and most abject confession and repentance for these terrible sins that he committed, he wrote Psalms 32. And it begins with this great verse. Happy are those whose transgression is forgiven, whose sin is covered. That's a word for us today, isn't it? You know, there are some, some of our folks who think, probably some of you sitting in this room on, uh, on social media today listening to me, who think that you have done something that is unforgivable by God. And some of you years later are still beating yourself up over it. And I bet none of you under the sound of my voice in this room or on social media has even come close to what David did in that one with the episode. But guess what? Even if you have, look at what David did. Who scripture refers to, by the way, as the apple of God's eye. Learn to be like David and come clean with God. Once and for all, and know that God's forgiven it, and God doesn't even remember it anymore. David confessed his sin, experienced new life, and he, because he came to know the greatness of God's forgiveness. Some of us never come to know the greatness of God's forgiveness because we keep holding on to stuff that God has already thrown in the sea of forgetfulness. Again, Psalms 32 and 1. Happy are those whose transgression is forgiven, whose sin is covered. And then God, David goes on to write in verse 5, he tells about it. He says, then I acknowledge my sin to you, God. I didn't hide my iniquity. I said, I will confess my transgression to the Lord. And guess what? You forgave the guilt of my sin. Did you hear what he said? He not only forgave the sin, he forgave the guilt of it. Some of you need to know that the guilt is forgiven as well. Amen? That's good news, don't you think? And David didn't stop there. In verse 6-8, through eight, he, he says to all who want this kind of forgiveness, David writes, therefore let all of the faithful offer prayers to you at times of distress. You are a hiding place for me. You preserve me from trouble. You surround me with cries of deliverance. David is sharing this as his personal 
life example of how great, how far-reaching is God's mercy and God's grace. And it's an invitation to us. In 2022, what I said two weeks ago in a sermon, no matter what you have done, no matter how bad you may have think you messed up, you need to realize you are never, ever, ever beyond the grace, forgiveness, acceptance, mercy, and steadfast love of God. Amen? Never! David ends this great psalm with, in the 11th verse with an invitation to come to our senses and experience this new life of forgiveness. He says, be glad in the Lord and rejoice. Shout for joy. When you come to understand the greatness of God's love and God's forgiveness, that should be the response. And perhaps you've never experienced that because you've never come to accept God's love covers everything. Jesus paid it all. He didn't say all except for God. He may have said all except for, I'm just kidding. But he never said all except anybody. Amen? It's all covered. Come to your senses. Free yourself from anything you have done in the past. Free yourself from any imagery that you have accepted of yourself that keeps you from experiencing new life because God wants you to have this new life that God wants to give you, that this abundant life that Jesus promised that he came to give you and me. And let me just say this about confession because I don't think we understand confession. When we stand here and we said let us confess we always default to the bad stuff we've done and we stop there that's not the only confession you should be doing you know, go ahead and confess the bad thing and by the way the word confess means to say along with that's what confess means so say along with God yep God what I did was wrong but also say along with God what God says about you. That Pete and I have been teaching on Wednesday night from 1 Peter uh, uh, 2. And, and, and let me just share it with you. Confess that I am acceptable because I'm chosen by God. Confess that I am valuable because I belong to God. Confess that I am capable because God saved me and God chose me to do God's holy work. Confess, especially this, that I am forgivable because I have received God's mercy. When you confess, don't just cough up all the old bad stuff you did. Make out a short list. God, you know all that stuff. I confess it's bad. Spend time confessing on the good stuff that affirm you, come to your senses on these things, and it will help you experience new life. Paul writes about this in the third assigned text for today, 2 Corinthians, the 5th chapter, uh, the uh, 17th through the 21st verse. It's that great passage where it says, if anyone be in Christ, they are new creation. All things are passed away. Old things are passed away. All things are new. I love the way uh, the New Living Translation said it. So this means that anyone who belongs to Christ has become a new person. What, they, what this means is that anyone who has said yes to walk into a relationship with God and in fellowship with Jesus Christ has become a new person. The old life is gone. And listen to this. A new life has begun. And then Paul said, all of this is a gift from God. He brought us back to God's self through Christ. That's good news, isn't it? And finally, that wonderful passage, familiar passage, one of the most famous passages in the Bible that at least read so well this morning, the parable of the prodigal son. 
That's a familiar story, you know, you know the story. This young kid, impatient with his future happiness, he's the young of two brothers, comes and demands from his father what he thinks is rightfully his, his father gives it to him, and off he goes. Takes the money, goes to a faraway place. Uh, I often wonder, how did the older brother know he used it on prostitutes? <laughs> I'm just saying. He wasn't there, it sounds like, uh, uh, Sound like, sound like projection, doesn't it? <laughs> I just often wonder, how did he know that? But he leaves, the point is he leaves the comfort, security, love, and protection of his father. He wastes it all, and um, he ends up doing the most indignant task a Jew could do, feeding hogs. And it seems like he's, in this impossible situation with no hope of experiencing the kind of life he had before leaving his father. But there's this wonderful line that I've always loved. Jesus said, but he came to his senses. Now you know what part of the sermon title comes from, right? He came to his senses. And in hope of once again experiencing some kind of newness of life, he said, I'm not while we're here in this pig pen. Everybody at home, my, even the servants in my father's house that are off than me, I tell you what I do. I'll go and say, Daddy, just let me be a servant in your house. You are not a servant in God's house. Because God is just waiting. God's not going to overrule your free will. God wants you to come to your senses and come home to God's love and forgiveness. God is patiently waiting on you. God wants, and it doesn't matter what you've done. It doesn't matter how far you've been away. It doesn't matter. Any of it doesn't matter. God is waiting for you to come to your senses because God hasn't gone anywhere. God is still there. And we see it in this story. What happens? He decides to go home. When it comes across the horizon, I imagine Dad every day went to look. Is he coming home today? Is he coming home today? And he sees him one day. He's coming back to beg to be a servant. <laughs> and he goes up to Dad, Dad, I did this, I did this. I'm sorry, I've been And Dad, <laughs> that's a liturgical point of view, okay? <laughs> <laughs> Doesn't matter. Hey, go get a ring for his finger. Get some shoes for his feet. Get, a, get the best robe for him. And by the way, you know that big calf we've been saying for special events? Go get that thing and kill it. We're going to celebrate. He comes home, and what he comes home to is a father who saw him and ran out to meet him with outstretched. God, Jesus is trying to tell us what God is like here. And he encountered a glass. Uh, a father was so glad to see it. Ooh, this huge celebration. There's another passage in the scripture that tells you about that. It says, the angels in heaven rejoice more over one person coming to their senses, that's my way of saying it, than all you good Christian folks sitting up in church. Oops. Isn't that a way of putting it? But the story didn't end there, does it? Remember, there's an older brother in this story. Pete and I was talking about this on Friday night coming back from Montgomery. He says he identifies him more with that one, the older brother. The older brother who spent his whole life doing everything he was supposed to do, right there in the father's house the whole time, but he never really experiences any joy or any fullness of life because he has never come to his senses about who his father is, about the love that his father has for him. He is sitting in the father's house and doesn't know that everything I have belongs to you. All the joy, all the hope, all everything I have is yours. And so he's so miserable that when his brother come home, he's angry. 
And the father goes out there to try to beg him to come in, and he won't. And the father's trying to get him to look past your anger. Look past your disappointment. Look past this uh, perfectionism that you got, that you think you got to do everything to earn my love. Me celebrating Jeff coming home to God's love doesn't cheat you out of anything I have for you. Amen? And so, the other brother's angry. Father comes out to speak to him. What is so unique about this particular parable to me, I don't know if you've ever noticed it before. Jesus never tells us how it all ends. Jesus never tells us how the older brother responds. I got to think about that this week. I think maybe there's a reason why Jesus doesn't have an ending to this parable, like all his others. Perhaps it's because it's a timeless invitation to even us to come to our senses on God's love and forgiveness and experience in your life. Perhaps the reason there is no ending to this parable is because God wants us to decide where we are at the end of this parable. Are we inside the party celebrating because we've come to our senses and experienced a new life because of God's wonderful love and forgiveness and mercy, grace, and acceptance? Or are we standing on the outside with our arms crossed, refusing to come in because we're lost in our anger at what life has thrown at us? We're lost at, in our disappointment of what others have done to us? We're lost in our anger at what we have done to ourselves even through bad choices? And God is still speaking to us. God is still inviting us to experience the real new life that God has for us just by coming to our senses as that younger brother did. And he got up and he went to his father's love and forgiveness. While I always invite us into a relationship with God if we haven't done it today, I really am inviting all you church folk, <laughs> all you folk have been around a while. I'm inviting you to come to your senses on God's love and forgiveness and experience the fullness of abundant life that Jesus promised. That's what the younger brother did. I hope the older brother did. I want you to hear the still speaking voice of God that says, Softly and tenderly. He ain't screaming at you. It's an invitation. Softly and tenderly. Jesus is calling. Calling for you and calling for me. See on the portals he's watching and waiting. Watching for you and for me. And what is he saying? He's saying, come home. Come on. You who are weary of all the stuff that life has thrown at you. You who are weary of your own bad choices. You who are weary of what people have done for, to you. Come home. Ye who are weary, come home. Come home to my love and my forgiveness. Earnestly. Tenderly. Jesus is calling. Calling, oh sinner, come to your senses and experience new life. Come home.
seated. I knew there was a reason I started sending everything to my phone because I forgot the <laughs> communion literally, but it's on my phone. <laughs> Amen. The Lord be with you. Our baptism by water, as experienced by Austin this morning, is a way of coming to our senses to experience new life with God's love. But this table, this table of blessing and hope, is a continuing and regular reminder to us to come home, come to our senses, and experience newness of life in God's love and forgiveness. You know, in Psalms 32, David said, I acknowledge my sin to you, God. And I did not hide my iniquity. I said, I will confess my transgression to the Lord. And following David's example, we find relief from those things that we have done that separate us from, a feel us like we separated from God, that do separate us from others, and often the best in ourselves. But this morning, don't just confess those things, please. Confess what God says about you as well. That you're able, you're capable, you're valuable, and you are forgivable. Let us go. Take a moment of confession. You know, David goes on to say, and you forgave the guilt of my sin. And that great opening line, happy are those whose transgression is forgiven, whose sin is covered. So with great joy, I say to you what David has come to realize. And know that after your confessions, you are forgiven and God gives you new life. Amen? Let us pray. God of new life, we present to you these simple elements representing the grain of the field and the fruit of the vine. Send your Holy Spirit to consecrate them to be for us an awakening in which we come to our senses of the greatness of your love and forgiveness. In Jesus' name, amen. If you have your elements for communion and you are so ready, would you join with me? The body of Christ, the bread of heaven. Amen. Let us eat together. The life of Christ, the cup of salvation, that brings into our lives hope, forgiveness, and new life. Let us drink together. Amen. Let us pray. God, for all you have done for us that we might experience newness of life, we say thanks. And for all that you have asked of us, we say yes. In Jesus' name. Amen.
David ends that Psalm uh, 32 says, Be glad in the Lord and rejoice, shout for joy. So let's conclude our worship today with the old African-American spiritual that expresses what happens when we come to our senses on God's love and forgiveness. And that is glory, glory, hallelujah. Since I laid my burdens down. Would you rise and sing? pray that you have been blessed by the service today, and I pray you'll remember this word for your life. Amen? Come to you, senses. God loves you and God forgives. Amen? Would you repeat after me? May the Lord, May the Lord watch, between watch between me and thee, me and thee. While, we're while we're absent, one from the other. One from the other. Amen. Amen. Have a blessed week.